Hello everyone, this is the great Lord and Master, Asaron the Eternal, or the artist formerly known as the Great Roberto. Alright, this is a video that's on the heels of the video I just made about the tarot and the true tree of life. This video is based on what I discovered yesterday, and it's going to make that other video look like child's play in regard to how the Trumps interact with the true tree of life. And it's going to show that, it's going to, it's going to show that Vortex Math and my other work with the single digit code is verified by the tree of life. And it seems like the Hermeticists knew that the Jewish system was flawed and wrong and they hid it within the Hermetic Kabbalah because Jewish Kabbalah and Hermetic Kabbalah are not the same thing. And the Hermeticists, from what I've seen, especially with the Weight deck and Crowley deck, and the Golden Dawn decks, which the Crowley deck is, um, they knew that this is the proper tree of life right here, the true tree of life. But they can't, for some reason, they didn't want to come right out and say it openly, for some reason. You know. But once you discover and dig, you see that it is, and this is going to, I'm going to show you today and put a, basically an ironclad bow on it, because after you see this, there's going to be no doubt at me. See, the other video is a home run hit for my point, but this is just like, this is going to lock it in. Let's get to it. Okay, you see the true tree of life here. I had to redraw this. Now there's one difference about this tree of the other one, and I mentioned it before, and this is really key to the whole thing. This is really key, because the deception is only off by one number. That's it. It's the difference between one, because that, that, but that one is huge. That's the difference between life and death, and because the one you know, is very important. That's why it's where it is, and it is a feminine essence. And it goes back to the root of the very beginning, or the first two masculine feminine aspects of the tarot, the magus, or the magician, and the high priestess. I mentioned in the last video that those cards are actually reversed, and they are reversed. I'm going to show you how the, the proper numbering goes. See, the positions are right. The magus goes up here between 0 and 1. And the high priestess goes from Kether to Tiberath. That is correct. What is wrong is the numbers. But when you, when you flip the cards and flip the numbers, it corrects itself. And here's how it is. Now, the high priestess, rightfully labeled 1, is going to change this number from a 2 to a 1. And the magician, which is rightfully 2, the masculine presence uh, essence, is going to change this from the 1 to the 2. Now, I had a huge... I had to really work on this in my mind because I couldn't just slap a 2 up there just to make my system work. It had to be justified. It has to be congruent and it has to fit. I can't just throw numbers around because I want them to be there. It has to have a reason and it has to be a legitimate reason. And at first, the, at first glance, the idea of putting a 2 between 0 and 1 almost implies that the masculine presence does precede the feminine. But that's not what's being said. That's not what's being said by that. And the Hermeticists already imply a 2 by putting the Magus there. But they just call it 1. So by having the Magician there, it's already an implication that that's 2. But here's, here's, why, here's why I can honestly, with truth and authenticity, say that that is two, and here's why. Because you have the zero state up here, which is zero, and as soon as that one comes into existence, you can call it consciousness, as soon as that one becomes a one, as soon as it, the split instant that is created, you automatically, by default, have two states. Everything, which is one, and then nothing. So as soon as that becomes one, it automatically, by default, becomes two. And that is what's being said by that. It's not saying that two precedes it. It's just saying as soon as this is created, you automatically have two states. And that is why that two belongs there. 
In this high priestess, we are, we're going to see why that's important in a minute. Now, and it's also congruent with the other um, order of emanation of the trumps, which is explained in the first video. So that's congruent because we have the zero over here, and then we jump way over here to the two, or to, to what they have is one, and then they jump back to two, then back to three. It's just all over the place, and it doesn't make sense. This way it makes sense. You got the zero over here, nope, don't go that way. Then you have a natural sweeping arc from one, then two, and that's congruent with what we see down here with 13, 14, and 15. It doesn't go 13, 14, then 15. It goes 13, 14, then 15, like a gentle sweep, and it's the same thing up here. So everything is congruent when you do it this way. So now you got zero, then you got one. Then you got the two, which is justified by the two conditions that that one creates by its creation. Okay, so this now this sets the stage for the most powerful revelation that will is not only congruent with my cube number grid, but it's congruent with the idea of this um, tree of life using the single digit code of zero through nine as its format. Because with the fault with the metric system and the Jewish system, which is basically the metric system, is that the root system doesn't acknowledge zero. So if you use, uh, it doesn't acknowledge zero, they put zero, the first zero doesn't show up in the metric system until after 10. It already, it already goes through the whole cycle, then the zero shows up. Well, you can't use that zero if you don't use it in the beginning. The root system has to have the zero. That's why it goes zero. That's the system. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is the key. That's the root. You can't just go throwing zeros around because you want to add them in some other place. And that's the root of Abrahamism. Not only does Abrahamism try to um, usurp the feminine with the masculine, they call the masculine one. It's not. The ten is masculine. In a masculine illusion of one and zero. That's what that is, and that's why the, that's there. Because the masculine is, is, a, is an illusion of binary, zero and one. And that creates two, the masculine condition. So that's what's being said there. And then the other sephiro comes alive with the two. So this is congruent. But now let's get to the beautiful math of this. As this says, remember, everything comes from this. Kundalini precedes electricity. That's what the root of this is. Kundalini, is, uh, electricity is the product of what we call kundalini, or chi. Okay, and this is going to show this in the, in the code. Okay, now the trumps. The trumps also tell us this. So now, if we add up 20, 12, and 7, because remember, the pillar is created, so everything that comes off that pillar. If we add up 20, 12, and 7, that comes to 39, okay, 3 and 9, there's no masculine presence over here right now at all, and that reduces to 12 and then 3, okay, so the Trumps are telling us this, not the Sephiro, so the Trumps are telling us that this is 3, the feminine essence of Kundalini, and this is going to tell you over here, now if you take 18, 10, and 5 and add those up, you're going to get, guess what number you get? When you do that, you can't, without adding. So if you add 18, 10, and 5, what you get is 33. Any Freemason is going to know what that means. Any occultist is going to know what 30, 33 means. Jesus lived to 33. 33 is huge. And 33, of course, reduces to 6, which is, as I show here, the masculine mask of Kundalini. So it's even telling you that this is nothing without this. So let's reduce it to that. And now, the middle pillar, if you take 21, 14, which is temperance, and the high priestess, which is rightfully 1, that comes to 27. And then 27, of course, reduces to 9. So now you're getting 3, 6, and 9, the entire kundalini grid, in the, in the structure of this entire thing. This whole thing is nothing but 3, 6, 9, the kundalini grid. So now we got three, we got six, and then the middle pillar is nine. So, but now, if I had left that two here in the improper place, it would have, it would have called the um, the order of these would have came to ten. And ten is the masculine expression. 
but it's um, it's dead. It's separated. Okay, Isn't, this is absolutely wild. But if you do it properly, it comes to nine. So we've got three, we've got six, and then nine. All right, now, this continues. Each horizontal bar here, we've got horizontal bars that connect these two, these sephiro, these sephiro, and then these sephiro. It's the empress, it's strength, and then the tower. Okay, now if you add, that's three, that is three bars. Now if you add, um... If you add those up, you add 16, you add 8, and then you add 3, that comes to 27. Oh, actually, I actually did make a mistake. Let me, let me correct that. The 27 is the 3 bars. If you add these trumps, 21, 14, and 1, it comes to 36. That's even more important. That's even better. 3 and 6. So you're getting 3 and 6 here. So the middle pillar adds up to 3 and 6, and then becomes 9. The horizontal bars add up to 27, which reduces to 9. Okay, and then there's, you know, whole kinds of Jewish myth about 27 names of God and all that stuff. Remember, the Jews don't create. The Jews only poison truth. you got to remember that. They take what is true and pervert it. The, one of the best examples of that in the Western world is Christianity. True Christianity is Gnosticism. Not fucking what we see with the Roman Catholic death cult. That's, that's the Jewish interpretation of Christianity, and it's poisoned, you know. All right, so we got that. We got the horizontal bars add up to 27, which reduces to 9. Now, what we're going to see, if we add up the only trumps that haven't been used yet in the, in the, in the um, adding of these have been on either side, these angle ones, you got 19, 15, 8, I'm sorry, uh, 19, 15, 11, and 6. If you add up those, 19, 15, 11, and 6, it comes to 51. And that reduces, of course, to 6. We see that here, 6. If you add up 17, 13, 9, and 4, which is on the other side, it adds up to 43, which reduces to 7. Now you've got 7 here. So it's telling you that. So now, if you add up... 6 and 7, that of course comes to 13, which reduces to 4. Now, the 4 in, in relation to this tree of life is a very important and significant number. Because not only is 4 Yahweh or the elements, but also each of the four worlds, remember this is four worlds, re representing each of the elements. So anytime anything comes to 4, it's basically validating this as the four worlds, four ones. Okay? So that's important. So that comes to four. So now we're going to see something else that's very powerful. Each of these numbers, when you break them down, it forms either six or five groups. Okay? You got here, you got this one, it forms, you know, you, you got Boaz is one, Yaquim is two, the middle is three, the horizontal bars are four. And then on the side here is 5, and this side is 6. Now if you separate them, it's 6. If you add them together, it'll be 5. Now here's what happens when you apply the math. All right, so you got 6 groups. If you add up all the numbers of the 6 groups separated, okay, it comes to... I don't have the exact numbers of what it adds up to, but it reduces... And, and then if you add them all up... And then you add 6 for the number of groups used, it comes to 10. A separate, again, a separation of 1 and 0. But if you do it in 5s, if you combine the masculine and the feminine as 1 and join them together, it, add, it, it creates 5 groups. And then you add the numbers of the 5 groups, and then you add a 5 for the 5 groups, and then it comes to 9. Okay, this is absolutely amazing, because remember, the 10 is a separation, so if you use 6, it's a separation. If you add them together, it's 5, and it produces 9. And the same thing with Tipereth, with the tree of death and stagnation versus the true tree. On the tree of death and stagnation, Tipereth is represented as a 6, 6 groups, separation 10. If you join them, if you join them together, the elements plus divine spirit, it's 5. And it creates nine. This is absolutely, and this is just, again, the difference between all of this is only one. You know, one is being manipulated 
in the wrong way with, you know, toxic math, the metric system, the Jewish system of the tree of death and stagnation. It's only off by one, but that one is huge. That's the difference between kundalini awakening and functioning properly and beautifully, and then it not working, as you see in my grids. If you watch my videos about Proof of God series in the grids, that is huge. That one difference is enough to throw off everything. It's super important. And again, now when we have the proper one here coming from um, Tippereth, what is five? What is five? Five is the elements plus one. So you got Yahweh is the elements plus the one divine holy power creates five. And you're seeing that here. And you're seeing um, temperance is 14 is five. Four plus one is five again. The masculine and feminine expression is eight, 21. It's just everything works like this. It's absolutely amazing. And another justification for the top of this, because everything really hinges on this. This is the key. The high priestess and the magus, putting the high priestess and the magician in the proper order is the key that unlocks this, really. Because if you didn't do that, it would be ten. It would be separated. So you've got to figure that out. And it's just the single digit code tells you that. Zero is nothing. One is feminine. Two is masculine. Simple as that. The, the single digit code tells you how to do it. But another justification for that is this, is this one. Because in the order of emanation, once the supernal triangle comes alive, four comes down to here, it's masculine. So now you've got a masculine presence coming from uh, Chokma. But over here, from one, you got six, the lovers, is the masculine expression, is the masculine mask of Kundalini coming to Tipperath. So what you have is two things happening. You got two masculine forces coming into Tippereth, and it doesn't have any feminine influence yet. That that's like two fucking rams butting heads over over the maid. So by having the high priestess coming from Kether down here as one, it infuses the the potential of Tippereth with the feminine essence, and then it's ready for the masculine of the Emperor and the masculine mask of Kundalini, the exertive force of Kundalini with six. So the feminine is receptive and waiting for that there. So that's why that's important to have the High Priestess here because, you know, because you could get away with saying the High Priestess comes from here to here and just call that that, but that's no, again, there's no movement there. You know, this is suggesting not only movement, but it's also showing, as I said before, that as soon as that one is created, the split instant of manifestation of consciousness, you automatically have two conditions. That is key. And, that's, and that tells you that with this whole pillar. Remember, if you add the pillar, 631, that becomes 10. That's 1 and 0. That's the illusion of masculinity. That's saying that this, basically, is telling you that, this, that, that creation is a holofractal illusion. And that also goes hand in hand with my work of um, the single digit code in the cube structure of the numbers. It tells you that, and nature tells you that. This isn't man-made, well, this is man-made, but the, the, the application of the cube is, isn't man-made. That's what happens when you sync, when you harmonize the frequency of creation with the single digits, which are just one and zero, a binary, that's all it is. That's all this is, is a binary, that's it. Holofractal binary, the illusion of matter, the illusion of the world created by one and zero. That's all this is. I see if I got anything else. Oh, there's one thing I want to add that's very important. On the first video, I put this as an annotation, but some people might not have read that, and it's, it concerns the court cards and the number 16. Again, the court cards, as I said, uh, represent the 12 houses of the zodiac, but the 16 cards. And I just want to verbalize this on camera so you know what I'm talking about. 16, any multiple of 16, as in the 16 court cards, or in construction here in the, in the West, we use 16 as a construction code, 16 on center for studs and all that. But any multiple of 16 will produce a code in order. It'll, it'll go 0, and then it'll go through the um, odd numbers. So 0, 7, 5, 3, 1, and then it'll switch to um, 8642, and then it'll revert to 9. Then what was the 0 spot will become 9, and then it will go 97531, and then again 84, 
8642 and so on. It'll keep repeating that code. And that's why you do that, because if it was just 12, every multiple of 12 only ever produces 3, 6, or 9. That's why there's 16 and not 12, because 16 captures the whole um, single digit code, whereas 12 would only capture 3, 6, or 9. Okay, that's why that is. So I hope this is, um, I hope I got everything. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. But that's that. So that's, I mean, that, this is, I mean, this is amazing. If you, if you can understand, and if I conveyed the message correctly, which is more importantly, of what is being done here. But this is it. This is the tree of life. I can definitively tell you that I cracked the code of the tree of life, and I own the tree of life. <laughs> I dare anyone to call me on any of this. Prove me wrong. Do it. Go ahead and prove it. Because it, there's only one case that someone pointed out that it, it isn't even legit. It isn't, I just wanted to add it, but it, it's the order of the planetary aspects. Okay, the order of the planets. This is like something like Uranus and the planets that we can't see. But this is Saturn. That's Jupiter. That's Mars. That's Sun. That's Venus. This is Mercury, this is the Moon, this is Earth. And that is, you know, if you do it in that order, it shows a planetary order as this one, two, three, and so on. But that's not congruent to the way the solar system is, because it doesn't go fucking Mars and then fucking the Sun. It would go Mars and Earth, you know, then Venus, then Mercury, then oh, Earth, Moon, Earth and Moon, then Mercury, and all that stuff. But even if that wasn't the case, and even if it was just a distance, like putting the Earth in the center and the planetary distances from Earth, that's still not congruent, that's still an extremely weak argument for what is proven mathematically here, because, you know, the order of the planets is basically irrelevant, really, that's irrelevant, that's an irrelevant feature. This is mathematics. The order of the planets isn't necessarily mathematic. They, you know, the, the order of the planets could have changed thousand times. You know, the asteroid belt is a, a, a perfect example of that. That asteroid belt didn't just get there by accident. That asteroid belt used to be a planet, or it could have been a, been, been a part of Earth. You know, Earth could have been bigger, or Mars could have been bigger, or some fucking thing happened in space that caused that asteroid belt to take place. And someday that asteroid belt could coalesce into a planet in millions of years. So, I mean, that's an extremely, extremely weak argument to justify the fucking flaming sword pattern. Especially in light of all the mathematics that I've just shown you in these two videos. So, thank you for watching. I hope I got everything. <laughs> Thanks.